Hello lovely people, welcome to another episode of Book Chat. I have four books to talk to you about this week, I'm just going to crack on with it. I'm going to start with a book that I read on my Kindle. This is The Enchanted April by Elizabeth von Arnhem. Um, this is the first Elizabeth von Arnhem, Elizabeth von Arnhem book that I've ever read, but I will definitely be checking out more of her stuff because I really enjoyed this. Um, just to pull back the curtain on how much of a backlog of book chats I have, I read this book in April because it's called The Enchanted April. Um, April's been a bit stressful, I'm sure you'll know why, but um, this was exactly what I needed at the time. So The Enchanted April is essentially about um, these four women who um, two of them see this ad in this newspaper that's advertising this castle in Italy um, and they just think, think it'd be absolutely wonderful to go. So they put out an advertisement looking for two more people to split the cost with. And then it's so these four women who go to this castle and being at the castle like changes them. All of these things that they're dissatisfied with with their life and stuff, they gradually start to like feel a change coming upon them. And so it's kind of about female friendship. It's kind of about like women, these women like really finding themselves and that sort of thing. Um, I just, I had a really lovely time reading it. It was sort of like exactly what I needed at the time, like um, see, reading these women who are like slowly or quickly, in a couple of their cases, like coming into their own, finding what they need. I just found that really soothing. Um, I also really like the way that Elizabeth von Arman talks about like scenery and stuff, like her descriptions of the castle. And I know that it's based on a castle that she actually went to in Italy and stayed at. So like her descriptions of it felt really real. And I could sort of tell that she had, this is based on personal experience. Um, I can see how like, to be honest with you, some of the like conclusions a bit are a bit like, oh, of course this is what's happened, blah, blah, blah. Like tie everything with a bow. But like, um, I really needed that. Like if it had ended badly for the people, I don't know what I would have done. I just needed something that was like soft and lovely and heartwarming. And that's very much what this was. And I had a really lovely time. I know there's a film and I would be really interested to watch the film. And I know, I also know that Elizabeth von Arnhem wrote a whole bunch of books. So I will definitely be exploring her in the future. After that, I have two fantasy books to talk about. So the first one of those is Tooth and Claw by Joe Walton. As you might be able to tell from the cover, this is The Pride and Prejudice of the Dragon World. So this is uh, very much like a Regency-style novel. It's just that everyone happens to be a dragon. So this book starts with like the patriarch of this family passing away, and then you have like a lot of topics which are very typical of Regency-era, like Jane Austen-style books. So you've got the two impoverished um, daughters who like need to make a good match. They've been split up. Like, um, will they be able to navigate? And um, you know, like at one point there's literally like a picnic, and I felt so Emma with like those people like wanting to be with each other but not sure if they can be. And there's a picnic, and there's like social conventions, and there's like a snooty lady, and that sort of thing. Um, I just it was that really weird thing because like the the writing style is very much in the same tone as Jane Austen. But sometimes the things that they are, sometimes you forget that they are dragons as a result. And then they will do things like um, one of the cruxes that happens at the very beginning of this, of which a lot of the um, conflict it falls out, is that, is that when this patriarch dies, there's a tradition amongst dragons to eat the dragon after they've died because it gives you a lot of strength and power and stuff and one person takes more than their fair share or did they and that sort of thing so like it becomes like a legal battle that runs throughout the novel and then you like remember that it's because like the dragons like ate each other um so it was a really interesting and fun time occasionally some of the plot points it did feel a little bit like Jane Austen by the numbers so there were like a lot of aspects which I was like I'm not surprised by what is happening but I am really enjoying reading it so it wasn't like a groundbreaking Regency type style plot but it was very good and I had a really fun time reading it. Um, so yeah, if you like dragons and Jane Austen, that's the book for you. Um, next up is a Catherine Kerr book. I have been reading the Catherine Kerr books. I'm sure you're probably sick of them by now on all my book chats. Um, this is The Spirit Stone, book five of The Dragon Mage, but it's book 13? 13, I think. Um, this was fine. I think I'm going to take a tiny break before I read the last two books in the series because I think reading this one I got a little bit fatigued. I'm not going to talk about any plot but I have noticed something which is there tends to be this dynamic which has recurred a couple of times across different lives in this now. Whenever I have to give a plot summary of this book I largely say that it's like a Celtic knot. It's a Celtic inspired fantasy world. Um, there are multiple um, timelines going on because the same 
souls get reborn into different people each like you know that's how life happens you're on like a big cycle constantly each book usually focuses on two to three of these timelines um a lot of stuff about this explained some really big events from way back in like the third and fourth books like some big showdowns in those books i've now got the backstory for which was very interesting um i have like a niggle which is that there tends to be this dynamic which has recurred a couple of times in this series now and it's recurred with different souls so it's not like it's the same soul constantly playing out this dynamic but there does tend to be a dynamic whereby two people are in a relationship one of them is terrible and manipulative and powerful and the other one is like entirely besotted and devoted to them and therefore sometimes does some dodgy things as a result um that's happened like a couple of times now and i am like a little bit tired of that particular dynamic constantly coming back um it is necessary for some plot points to happen but i'm like huh um, I think I'm going to take a small break before I continue and finish off the series, just because I feel like um, I'm really starting to feel how long this series is. Sometimes I think these books could be a little bit shorter than the, what they are, but um, I don't want to ruin the crescendo of this series by me being a little bit tired. So I'm going to take a small break before I continue and finish it. The final book I have to talk about is really small. This is Folk Magic, Myth and Healing, An Unusual History of British Plants by Fez Baker. Um, I picked this up at Thought Bubble, which is an independent comic festival in the UK. Um, I have read another Fez Baker book, which is all about bees. Um, this one is essentially like a, a dictionary compendium of um, different plants. Um, it gives you the history of like folk magic, what it was used for, um, and beliefs held around it, um, medicinal uses, and then sometimes you have these beautiful full page illustrations. There are smaller illustrations that accompany the different plants so that you can know what the plant looks like. Um, suffice to say, this is just like a really useful little compendium. I've like learned lots of little interesting tidbits. I think as well, if you were a writer, um, this might be a very useful thing to have because you can consult it. And I think that there's a lot of interesting details about um, what a lot of plants symbolise, how a lot of plants are used throughout history, which if you're someone who writes historical fiction or like fantasy and you'd like to weave some symbolism and stuff into your things, I think this would be really interesting. I've sort of been reading this with like a little eye open because my friend who's a writer, I was like, is there anything in this which could help her? Um, but no, this is really lovely. Um, it's also by um, like an independent creator, so I would, I would heartily recommend this. It's really good. Um, that's everything I want to talk about this week. Have you read any of these? Do you have any feelings on any of these? I would love to hear all of your thoughts and more in the comments down below, but otherwise I will see you next time for something different.